Today we're going to be looking at potential dividers. Now there are two types of potential dividers. There are the potentiometer and there is the um, rheostat. So potential dividers are used as voltage controllers. This means they control the amount of potential across two different terminals. So this one here is the potentiometer. Um, trying to spell it correctly. And this is the rheostat. And we can shorten potentiometer to just a pot. Um, this is the simpler of the two. Um, <coughs> and they're made of um, combining two different types of resistor. So the potentiometers are found, they're, they're, they're simple potential dividers, and this is because they just have these three terminals, one, two, three, here. The middle connection acts like a wire connecting the two resistors. So, if you turn, so there's a little, this, this rotates here, if you turn the pot one way, R1 gets higher, and R2 gets lower. And if you go the opposite direction, the opposite will happen. This means you're controlling two different resistance values with one operation. So if we look at this simple circuit, this is, uh, this is what it looks like. So you have this resistor. But then you have, so you could have a, a lamp here, for example. And then it's like when this part, this connection here is like your middle connection. And you can move it up and down. And in here, we've only got one resistor shown, but there's actually a combination. You'll have um, two resistors in series um, that are variable. <coughs> and as you change the um, position of the potentiometer, then at the right voltage this light would come on. So you can use this type of circuit in um, dimmer switches, for example. So an example would be a dimmer switch. If you change this to a thermistor, you could also they also potentiometers are also used in thermostats. Um, and they're often combined with transistors. So let's look at a circuit with um, a transistor. Actually, we'll look at another simple circuit. So we can have, so we've got a, 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 an energy source here. We've got our variable resistor here. And here we have a loudspeaker. So this is um, this circuit uses a rheostat to control volume. <clears throat> the potential difference of the signal generator's output is shared between the rheostat and the loudspeaker. If the resistance of the rheostat is reduced, um, the volume goes up because the loudspeaker's share of the potential will increase. Um, let's do another circuit. Let's do the one with the um, the um, transistor. It's 
concentrating on trying to draw this nicely. And this is a, um, a light dependent resistor. And now we've got our transistor. So remember a transistor um, controls the direction in which um, it will allow electricity to flow. And here we've got an LED and it's important that you connect an LED in the right way because it only allows electricity to flow one direction through it. Um, there we go and we need another resistor here. So here we go. This is a simple night light. So we've got a light dependent resistor and this is our LED and this is our transistor. So the LED will only come on when the transistor switch is on. So we can use, we're using the transistor like a switch in this case. As the light level decreases, so as the light decreases, the resistance of the light dependent resistor increases, so the potential difference across it will increase. And so the, so the share of the potential increases and that will then cause the transistor to turn on and thus the LED. And obviously when the light then decreases, um, the resistance will, um, will decrease as the light goes, the light increases, the resistance decreases, the transistor turns off and it'll switch off the LED. Um, <coughs> here are some little questions for you to think about. How could you build a temperature dependent circuit. Have a wee look at the symbols that we did earlier um, to refresh yourself and see if you can build a temperature dependent circuit um, and yeah and just see what, what designs you could come up with. Now often potentiometers are used in circuits called wheat stone bridges. So the, the potential dividers are connected in a bridge formation. Um, so something like this. So we've got our supply. This is R1, this is R3, this is R2, this is our supply voltage. And this is R4, and then if we have a point here, we're going to call X, and a point here, we're going to call Y. And then let's put, we're going to connect them with a voltmeter here. <coughs> um, the voltmeter, so the voltmeter shows the potential difference between the midpoints X and Y. Um, this, when the circuit is balanced, the voltmeter shows zero volts. <coughs> now we can 
use some analysis of what's happening here to, to um, find the conditions for this to be the case. So, if we know the potential at x, it will be the potential across R2. So the potential here is the potential we get over this point, over resistor 2. So we can work out V2 is going to be equal to R2 over R1 plus R2 times the supply voltage. Now this is called the div potential divider formula. And similarly, the potential at y is the potential across R4. So V4 is going to be R4 over R3 plus R4 times Vs. Now, when balanced, i.e. the voltmeter will say 0 volts, V2 must equal V4. So R2 over R1 plus R2 times Vs must equal R4 over R3 plus R4 times Vs. Obviously, supply voltages will cancel. And that then gives us now we can do some cross multiplying and we will get R1 R4 plus R2 R4 is equal to R2 R3 plus R2 R4, so we've just cross multiplied, and um, <coughs> if we subtract R2, R4 from both sides, we get R1, R4 is equal to R2, R3, and that then gives us the ratio R1. Wait a minute, I'll write that. I'm just going to change colour to make this, this bit stand out a bit more. Um, R1 over R2 is going to be equal to R3 over R4. So let's just highlight where these different resistors are. So R1 over R2 will equal R3 over R4 when the Wheatstone bridge is balanced. When it's not balanced, this will not be the case. Now, let's just write this out again. Because this then has some um, uses that we can we can use. Um, in practical settings. So let's look at um, a circuit that is a type of Wheatstone bridge. So this is our R1. This is our R2. Which So we know R1 and R2. We've chosen R1 and R2. And here we've got a variable resistor which we can control the resistance of. And here we have a light. Actually, I don't want to put that. I don't want to put. I'm going to, I'll draw this bit first. We have our voltmeter here, and here is our arrows for our LDR. So, what's happening here? We know R1, we know R2. We can change our variable resistor so we'll know R3 
Um, and what we do is we change the resistance on R3 until the Wheatstone bridge becomes balanced, so the, so the voltage becomes zero. And that therefore allows us to calculate R4. And from R4, we can then um, measure the light intensity. So this, um, this is a, a light meter. Um, you can similarly, similar circuits, can be used for strain gauges. So you can get an electrical device where the um, resistance of it changes with the, um, the, the force applied to it. Um, you can do scale, so the, a strain gauge is um, a, basically scales. So the kit, your digital scales or um, if you've got digital um, in the kitchen or digital scales from, for weighing um, just in your bathroom or even in industry. So a strain gauge is your scales that we, we, they're familiar, most houses have them. Um, and also a thermometer. So a digital thermometer is used in exactly the same um, way where you would have a variable resistor in this type of setting there would be a voltmeter um, when it's zero you can work out um, the the volt the, the resistance on this this would be a thermistor and you can then work out the temperature um, so I hope that helps